Hello people of YouTube, I hope you're well. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 27 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on the internet, that's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma's Knits. Welcome if you are a new viewer, welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Thank you for joining me today for this new episode. It's actually a take two of this new episode because the first one was the day before yesterday and it was really, really a mess. So I couldn't, um, I honestly couldn't publish it this way. I couldn't even stand watching me while editing it. So I decided to try again and hopefully this time will be much better. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that at the moment I have uh, some cumbersome accessories with me all day. These. So it's pretty unusual circumstances and um, I'm just being patient. I was operated two weeks ago. I still have two more weeks with a cast on my right leg and I have to live with it. Patience is not my uh, forte. So <laughs> yeah, I'm really frustrated, but um, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best and it's healing as normal, I'd say, as much as I can judge, obviously. So um, I wanted to film this, although I only have knitting to show you because I cannot really use my sewing machine with my <laughs> right foot in a cast. It doesn't matter. I have uh, enough things to talk about today. So there's knitting, there's a book review and, uh, and there are other various announcements. So let's grab your cup of tea or your uh, beverage of choice and uh, grab your whip and let's go. currently have three projects on my needles. Well, I have more generally speaking, but um, I'm focusing on these three because I really want to make progress on them. So the first one is my Zaza sweater with a pattern from uh, Maria Amelie Designs and yarn from Yarn by Simone. So the Zaza sweater. Here you go. I have started on the ribbing at the bottom of the body I'm making good progress on it i'm happy i'm making it as a um, mini knit along with my friend Jaime, who has a french-speaking podcast called soconit and uh and it's nice to have some motivation because um, i would probably have put it on the back burner because the body was very long it's a boxy style so that's why it's so wide but i really like it I really, really like it. I had to wait for Jaime to start on the on the ribbing because we're trying to be really parallel. We both started the ribbing last night. I'm making regular ribs, one, well, knit one, purl one. I should, I should try to avoid <laughs> sticking one of these into my eye. Uh, and she's doing knit one through the back loop and purl one. Yeah, so they will be slightly different because we're both using the same yarn. It's uh, it's a really beautiful color. Um, it's it's a pain to film or, or photograph and get the real burgundy, very deep purple color with black um, nuances. And I don't know if you can actually really see it there, but it's gonna be beautiful. And afterwards we can twin with Jaime. <laughs> it will be the only way in which we can twin because we really don't look alike but I'm going to really, really enjoy wearing it, I think. The lace on top is so pretty. Mm. I love it. Generally speaking, I love it. And somehow I'm glad that I had to wait for Jaime because that way I could also wait for my 23, millim 23 centimeter needles uh, to arrive. I ordered them from Pearlescence and they got there yesterday. So as soon as I'm done with the ribbing and the casting off of the body, I can start on the sleeves. I know that, um, I don't remember which one it was, uh, which sweater it was, which made me think that I would always start with, uh, with the sleeves instead of the body, but then I didn't have the right needles. It's just, I find it really annoying to use magic loop on, on sleeves. Whereas generally speaking, I don't hate knitting sleeves. So I'm glad I got the new ones and I will um, I will probably be, be done with it soon, like very soon. Yay! 
What's good about this project is also that I'm using 150 gram skeins, which are 600 meters, which means less uh, ends to weave in at the end, which makes me very happy because it's a real big problem of mine um, that I always complain that I should weave in the ends as they come, but I never do. So, so good for me, this one won't have too many ends to weave in. It makes me happy. Today I'm drinking the last uh, of my green tea with apricot and peach and whatever else. Uh, it's actually uh, iced tea by now, <laughs> at least what's in my cup, but I don't mind. The second work in progress is something which has been on my needles for almost a year now and I really, really want to finish it because I want to be able to bring it to Inverness next month. And, um, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I make it. It's my Dunivec Hub by Kate Davis Designs. I'm knitting it with JC Rennie, um, Aaron 100% wool in, a non, uh, in an undyed colorway, so that's white. It's massive. This is five and a half balls and I still have three and a half to go so it's going to be once it once it's finished and again once all the the ends are we are in <laughs> once I'm done with the ends and it's washed and blocked it's going to be so warm and nice and dense and comforting I think I'm going to love use it, wearing it and I'm I really want to uh, bring it with me next month to Inverness because it's probably not going to be that warm so I should have something to cover myself. I'm a bit ashamed actually that it took me so long to um, to go on with it but it's nine balls in a hole or at least that's how I've decided to make it and um, it's it's quite repetitive so it goes really fast when you're in the stockinette stitch areas but I cannot for the life of me actually remember the charts for these which means that I always have to refer to it and to be honest, it annoys me. So I should really focus and, um, and kick my own butt and finish it. So the deadline which I gave myself for it is mid-October because we're living on the 18th and I want to be able to wash it and block it before. But we'll see. So that was my second work in progress. And the third one is one which I have uh, like three weeks to complete now because it's a test knit and the pattern comes out on the 3rd of October. And by then I need to have it uh, finished, wash blocked and uh, photographed. It's going fast because it's on seven millimeter needles. Could kill vampires with that. This is the latest um, design by Ellen Magnusson, um, Icelandic knitter. And it's an Icelandic, um, it's actually, it's actually a cardigan, um, it's a cardigan slash sweater because you can decide, the pattern allows you to make it either one or the other, but originally it's a cardigan and I'm going to stick it, it's going to be my first stick. This is the cardigan of a lot of firsts anyway. So <laughs> the stick and the Icelandic wool because that's letlopi for the contrasting color and that's plötulopi with which I probably really butchered. I'm very sorry for any Icelandic speakers around us but basically it's unspun yarn. I don't know if you can see it which makes it very pleasant to knit with but also quite fragile which is why you normally knit it with something else in that case it's a lace yarn from uh, Ellen Magnusson's own range it's called Love Story I chose the colors um, on her website because she offers it as a kit so the kit is already available even though the pattern is not out yet but um, yeah I wasn't I wasn't really on board with the two suggestions so since you can also choose your own colors i went for blue and uh, gray and so far i love it and it's actually going fast because obviously with seven millimeter needles you go fast compared to uh, to um, smaller needles obviously but um i don't know if i mentioned it it's uh, it's a top-down cardigan although if i'm not mistaken traditionally icelandic uh, sweaters are knit bottom up but I might be wrong about that so it was well it's a challenge but at the same time it's it's okay because it's still a familiar uh, construction so I'm, I'm still half safe there and for now I really enjoy uh, I really enjoy knitting it 
So, so far, so good. Yeah, I forgot to mention the name of the pattern, which I will probably butcher as well. It's called Frjokorn, F-R-J-O with an accent, K-O-R-N. Sorry, if you know how to speak Icelandic, please correct me. That's all I have to say for now, but I will definitely be able to show it to you finished next time. I have one last half width. I'd say half because it's a really, really long-term project. It's the beginning of my memory blanket. It's a new beginning actually because I had started it last year. Well, not last year. Why do I think that everything before April was last year? <laughs> it's like Edinburgh Yarn Festival, you know? I'm saying at EYF last year, where it was actually just six months ago, but it feels like four years already. Anyway, so I had started it in March and I recognized after these four already that the needle I had chosen was way too big, the needle size. So I just frogged it last week and made them again. But it's exactly the same four which I had done already. So this one is the leftover, it's leftover yarn from my pavement sweater. And these three were minis, which I bought at uh, Berlin Knits in 2017 uh yeah because i'm making it with either leftovers or minis which i buy um on festivals as souvenirs memories so it's really really a memory blanket and it's even it even has a small memory stitch marker or a progress keeper um which i put there to remember which actually is the bottom to remember the direction of the blanket and it it comes from kate from um half and cottage craft so it's more house. So it's um, it's a nice additional memory attached to it. She uh, she was offering them, or giving them away at EYF um, last year. Look, see, last year. No, not last year. Six months ago. Anyway, I'm completely confused with those dates. It feels so long ago, really. Does it does it feel like you like this for you as well? I don't know. Or is it just me? Anyway, so here are all my works in progress. I'm not starting anything new until I'm done with at least one of these. And I should really hurry because one of my friends gave birth yesterday and the baby is two weeks early and I haven't started on the uh, birth present yet. I really have to, uh, I really have to hurry on one of these. I can't make it, I can't do it. I don't know where I will see it next day, when I will see her next anyway, so, but I shouldn't linger too long either. So that's it for the whips. Uh, last week I finished a book and I asked on Instagram if uh, some of you were interested in a review and the response was pretty much anonymous. Uh, see, it's from watching too many late night shows and they all freaked out on how uh, President Trump said anonymous or couldn't say it last week so no it's not anonymous it's unanimous i'm sorry i have so much free time at the moment that i'm a lot on youtube and um and netflix but mostly youtube so i watch a lot of podcasts and a lot of late night shows so the response to the the question do you want a review on that book was uh unanimous everyone wanted one so here it is and maybe after you're done with well watching this one Maybe you will never want me to do a book review ever again, but it's the first one, so you never know. I, there is always room for improvement anyway. So the book is Slow Knitting by Hannah Thiessen, published by Abrams, The Art of Books. I guess it's an American publisher. Yes, it says Abrams, New York, so yeah. I saw it on someone's Instagram. I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry, but it seemed to be really fitting with my current um, reflection and train of thought um, about being more intentional with my knitting. So I thought I would give it a try. I ordered it from Isolda. I know that it's available on Amazon as well, but I didn't want to order it there because I try to um, limit my purchases from Amazon. I don't really buy into their ethics. I'm not perfect by far. I still order from them sometimes, but if I find an alternative possibility, then I will choose it. So this one was bought from Isolda and it cost was ar around 22 pounds. Um, the cover says 29.99 American dollars. Anyway, so um, I will read you this and, uh, and then we can discuss it. So um, like the slow food and slow living movements, slow knitting encourages knitters to step back, pare down and celebrate the craftsmanship of their work. In five chapters centered around the tenets of slow knitting, sourcing carefully, producing thoughtfully, thinking environmentally, 
experimenting fearlessly and exploring openly, Anna Thiessen challenges knitters of all skill levels to view their practice in a new way. Each chapter explores fiber types, profiles yarn varieties, makers and yarn suppliers, and offers common patterns inspired by the featured fibers, 10 projects in all. With contributions from knitting superstars Nora Gorn, Veronique Avery, Bristol Ivy, and many others, slow knitting emphasizes what makes knitting a meditation, a passion, and a unique necessity. So that's, that's quite a... That's quite a program, right? Uh, the five chapters are all constructed the same way. That is, you have an introduction where the author, she draws from her own experience and, and, uh, and thinking to bring us to more intentionality in our knitting, let's say. Um, so you have the introduction, then you have a yarn profile, a pattern twice in each chapter, and yarn for thought in which are introduced other um, yarn suppliers or, or types of fiber which you could consider in the same um, in the same area of reflection let's say or for the same kind of use i found it very interesting it's a book which i would recommend not to read in one sitting on your sofa on a sunday afternoon you know it's something that uh, you need to take time to read and process and and think and consider so what i did was i read a few pages every night before going to bed or here and there and it really gave me the time to reflect on what I was reading. I want to get that out of the way. The only thing which I didn't really appreciate was, well not that I didn't really appreciate, anyway. So the yarn profiles sound a lot like advertisement, you know. I, I don't really like saying it that way because I know that it's not the intention. It sounds a bit advertorial, I don't know if you if the word is correct, but I understand the idea because it's to introduce the yarn and of course to also support the persons who make it and who uh, put time and effort and and um, reflection in making it and um, who accepted also to collaborate with the author for the for this book, for the patterns which are which are offered, but it sounds a bit commercial to me. It's just my own opinion. I'm not saying that everyone would feel that way, but I just wanted to mention it. The patterns themselves are two cows, three cardigans, three sweaters, one shawl and one pair of mitts with uh, mitts, mittens, mitts, I think, in a hat. Nothing really like inspired me to make immediately, which doesn't mean that I won't make anything from this book, but um, I think that most of the bigger pieces are knitted flat, which is not my favorite construction for a garment. So that's probably why I wasn't too inspired. There are interesting constructions and, and patterns and, and stitch arrangements. So I think I think a lot of people will find something to their taste there. What I really appreciated about this book is uh, all the thinking that it creates, you know. I feel I feel that at the moment, or maybe not in, well, maybe in the last month, I've seen more desire for more rustic yarns and more natural, more natural making, let's say, more organic making. I don't know, it feels like there's always that race for more, 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 you know, like, like, um, more colors, more textures, more speed, more performance. It's um, it's a bit overwhelming, to be honest, at least to me. If colors and textures and, and craziness and, and over the top stuff is, is up your alley, good for you. Um, I really I really wouldn't criticize that. It's to each his own, really, but it's, it's not my thing. I feel that I need time to rest and think and appreciate what I'm doing, you know? And um, that's something which I really appreciate in this book. At first, it's aesthetics. That's a hard word, right? The yarns proposed or offered there are more rustic and uh, not as smooth and refined and brightly colored as um, as a lot of things which we see at the moment. And I find it very resting, actually. It's uh, very resting to my eyes to have something which is not too bright. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't want to criticize, like, Superwash Merino or anything, because, see, I, I knit with Superwash Merino as well, you know? But it's nice to see something which is a bit more organic, let's say, even not if it's not in the... Uh, uh, label certified organic sense of the or sense of the word but it's it's a bit more natural you know and that's something that really resonates with me so uh, i appreciate this aspect of the book a lot sometimes i like to uh, intentionally slow down on my own knitting because that way, you know, I, I have more time to appreciate what I'm doing and uh, and so sometimes I have a bit of wonder, you know, when I when I see how just a thread of yarn and, and two needles can make, you know. And that, that book really fed that reflection of mine, of the, the idea that you, um, you can take time to appreciate what you're doing and 
the work of the people who, who made it possible for you to actually have this yarn in your hands. I really appreciated this book and I think that if you're in the same mindset about your making, then maybe you will appreciate it as well. I think there has to be things for everyone. So um, that was my opinion on the book. I hope you uh, you enjoyed hearing me uh, blabbing about it. We can go on to the more random announcements now. And the first one is something which is completely opposite to slow knitting, but it's, uh, it's a fun challenge which is going on in the French speaking um, community at the moment on Ravelry. It's the Knitage competition. So last year was the first edition and this year is the second. There are so the four houses like in Hogwarts. Uh, we are 150 people per house. The first games are, I think they've started three days ago. The first ones are Gryffindor against Ravenclaw and Slytherin against Hufflepuff. I'm a Ravenclaw, so please uh, feel free to cheer for my house. <laughs> the idea is to knit as much as you can. Like, basically, you earn points by knitting a lot of meters. So that's why I'm saying it's completely opposed to slow knitting. I'm not saying I'm perfect by far. Sometimes I'm not consistent at all. I'm human, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's uh, it's actually really satisfying to see the numbers on, on, the, on the scale decrease. I... I don't have enough time or energy to uh, check out the conversations in the common rooms every day because there's a lot going on there. But I do update my, my um, progress every evening with what I've knitted in a day. I find it a lot of fun. The second challenge which I've started is actually more in the long run. It's called Knit, thousand, knit a Thousand Grams 2018. And it's organized by Lee from the Luli podcast, which I really like. And that's how I uh, found out about it. I heard it on her podcast. And the idea is to uh, knit uh, at least a kilo of stash yarn. So the yarn has to be stashed from before September, September 1st, because that's when the challenge started. So you need to knit a kilo of yarn before EYF 2019. I found it really a fun challenge because I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, overwhelmed by my stash at the moment, to be honest. Although that doesn't mean I will stop buying yarn because I have my eyes on the uh, uh, Blacker Yarn 13th birthday anniversary yarn and I will order some. But I want to, um, I want to make some room for, for a bit more yarn before the uh, 2019 festival and, and fair season. And I think it's a good way to um, motivate yourself. You know, uh, you can cheer other people and and um, see everyone progress as we go along. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I have a lot of yarn, which I stashed before September 1st. So there is a lot of possibility <laughs> there. I was in Denmark last month and I wanted to mention here that I will not be talking about it on the podcast, at first because I didn't um, didn't really buy any yarn, I but just bought a mini kit to make some woolen penguins with um, with Danish yarn because I just find them really cute. But I I didn't want to bring more yarn home. Although I did see a lot of really nice yarn stores, be it in Copenhagen or in Aarhus, where I was um, on the first day. I spent a really really great day in Aarhus. The town is the second biggest in Denmark. It has 11 yarn stores. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time there, particularly thanks to uh, my guide and host, which, who is um, Ida, from the podcast called The Knitting Pace. I, well, we met brief, briefly at UIF in March and uh, she very, very kindly um, agreed to host me for the night which I spent in Aarhus and uh, to be my, my guide for the day. And I had like the best day of my trip there. So, uh, so thank you again, Ida, if you're, if you're, um, if you're watching. Um, I had a really, really great day and it really goes to show that the knitting community is awesome. If I needed any more convincing, which I didn't, yeah, it was great. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I would be going to Inverness in October and that's for the Loch Ness Knit Fest. I'm going with my friend Imo, Imogen, who has the Imogen Big Bad Yarn uh, brand. She's a yarn dyer. And uh, so there will be four of us going in a hall for, well, to man her stand, basically. So if you're going to Inverness, I would really, really like if you came over and, and said hi. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The vendors list is really cool. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to being there. And also Scotland. Every time Scotland is involved, I'm happy. So even if the yarn festival doesn't go as 
intended or anything. I would just be happy to be there. Hopefully my my leg is much better. I will be one month off the cost basically. So um, if all goes well, I should be standing strong and <laughs> representing uh, representing my friend's uh, yarn well. Yeah, I thought I could answer two more questions from the ones which were asked uh, on Instagram lately. Yeah, I started in the previous episode and I thought I could just go on with that. So the first question is, do you knit continental and, um, and do you knit fast? So the answer is no, I don't knit continental. Although I do knit, I do use continental knitting if I'm knitting color work. So I have one, one, one color in each hand. I have learned to knit English style and that's just how I'm most comfortable. I know that a lot of people actually find English style slower and more cumbersome because the, you need to take your hand off your needle and move the, move the thread. And um, that's just not how I work. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen I do a on a regular basis. I, I take videos of my hands while I'm knitting and you will see that I don't lift my finger from the from the needles basically. I don't lift my hand. Um, which makes for a lot less um, useless movements and uh, it makes me gain some time. So I am fast-ish. I'm not the fastest. I'm reasonably fast, let's say. Yeah, I tried learning English style. Oh, well, not English style. Continental style. I don't know. I'm just more comfortable English style. In the French community, there was a big trend uh, in the last year or so of people learning to knit continental style because it's faster. To each his own, I guess. It's just um, I'm more comfortable continental. English, oh god, this is so confusing because we never say English style or continent, well, we say continental style, but we never say English style. We always say à la française, so French style, basically, which is, which it is not. So I don't knit continental, not regularly, at least. I know how to, but it's not my favorite style. The second question is, um, which yarns did hold really well in time? And were there any where you were disappointed by how they held given the price you paid for them? Uh, yes and no. I don't have that much um, hindsight, let's say, because um, I don't wear my knitted items. Well, I don't really have any knitted item which I have worn so much that I could really have an opinion on it, except for two pieces. <laughs> the first one is my um, my Kelias uh, shawl, which I made use in yarn from La Féfile. So both are from French dyers, actually, the yarns which I used for these items. So on the shawl, I have worn it like every day for weeks and weeks on end. I have had uh, periods where I wore it really, really often. So on that that one, I can say that it, the yarn had held really well. There is a bit of pilling, but not that much that I could actually not consider wearing it uh, as it is. I should definitely shave it a bit, but it's still highly wearable. And uh, considering how often I've worn it and how much I've worn it, it's uh, it's an achievement. The one where I was a bit disappointed, but then you need to take it with a pinch of salt because it, it was mitts, which I made in yarn from Squirrel's Yarn, which is, it was Merino Cashmere Nylon. And I used them a lot for bicycle riding. So the the thread in the palm of the hand is a bit, I can see that it is thinner on some areas, but, and I was a bit disappointed because the yarn was, well, cashmere always is more expensive than just regular merino, even if it's mixed. It had nylon, so I expected them to be a bit stronger. Um, the mitts are lovely and they still held well, but they are a bit damaged on the hands and that was slightly disappointing because yeah, with nylon you expect things to be a bit more hard wearing. That's, it's not really criticism either because I did put them to a lot of stress with the, the, the rubber on the handles and everything. So yeah, I don't, I don't want anyone to think I'm making general assumptions about, about squirrels yarns because I really liked working with it and I think that on a regular garment it would hold really well but just not for mittens. That's it. Well. I think we're done with this episode. I've said everything I had said to say. So um, if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, share and leave comments below because it's always nice to uh, to hear from you, either from for questions or just to say hi or anything. Thank you again for joining me today and uh, I will see you once my cast is gone. So probably end of September or beginning of October. In the meantime, enjoy your crafting, take very good care and uh, see you soon. Bye.